Alright, this is Henry again, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the 1 to 100 scale B Club Gundam Heavy Arms Kai. And this is a resin kit that B Club made back in 1996. And uh, this is a quick look at the box. As you can see, it's pretty simple. We got uh, Heavy Arms name in Japanese here. We got a picture of the painted and completed kit on the front. A little B Club logo and a foil Gundam Wing sticker, and you'll see that in a lot of the uh, plastic Bandai kits. And other than that, there's not much to talk about on the box. I got some Japanese stuff here. One side of the box, we get a front shot of heavy arms, and the other side, we get a back shot. And that's pretty much it. For a quick look at the manual, like most resin kit manuals, basically just a black and white printout. On the front, we get a parts rundown, and on the back, we get our assembly instructions. And of course, being a resin kit, uh, straight out of the box, all of the parts are going to be molded in this uh, tan color. Uh, mine's got a few uh, parts that aren't tan because I'm actually uh, repainting this kit. So uh, this will be the, some of the parts are like the hand there has already been painted. But let's go ahead and give this guy a paint job so he'll look a little bit better for the review. And after getting a bit of paint, this is what the kit ends up looking like. And as you can see, I went with Heavy Arm Standard Color Scheme and just did a little bit of appreciating and highlighting just to make it look a little bit better. Uh, let's see, the decals that you see on here don't come with the kit. I uh, used the decals from Master Grade Gundam Death Scythe EW. Just uh, went online and bought the water slide set and used those on Heavy Arms here. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it as far as uh, painting goes. Do a quick turnaround just to get a look at him. And there you go. So you get a Heavy Arms Kai in the box. You also get his signature double Gatling gun. You get uh, two open hands. And the open hand for the left hand is pretty normal. Uh, pretty much any open hand you'd see on a, another Gundam kit. The open hand on the right hand, though, is kind of weird. It's got, like, the uh, last two fingers curled up and the other two extended. Not really sure what that's supposed to be. Uh, I've seen this same exact hand position on some of the Son Goku and SD kits. So if anybody knows if that's supposed to be something or if it's just some kind of stylistic way of opening the hand, I don't know. But it just looks weird to me. Also, one thing I do want to note about the Gatling gun is that it comes with this little handle, which uh, basically Heavy Arms can use to hold the Gatling gun with two hands. He'll hold it like that and attach it and hold it with the other hand. But for the life of me, I cannot remember him ever using this thing in the show. I know the, the 1 to 144 scale kit had it, and you had to like unplug it and plug it back in to be able to use it, but... I honestly can't remember him using this in the show, so I just left it off on mine. I mean, it's got two hinges on it. It's got a hinge where it can swing in and out right there, and then the handle has got a little hinge on it so it can swing back and forth, but I never, ever can think of a time when I'm ever going to use it, so I just left it off on mine. I went ahead and painted it, but I don't think I'm actually going to end up attaching it to the Gatling gun. It's much cooler when he just has it out like this. So anyway... Let's go ahead and get into articulation. Uh, one thing you'll want to note is that this kit is originally fixed pose, meaning that it doesn't have any articulation at all. Uh, it's meant to just be put together with metal pins and rods and just stand there and look good. But I went uh, through the process of adding articulation to all the necessary joints, and it turned out having about high-grade quality uh, articulation, about the same level of articulation that the other 1 to 100 scale high grade Gundam wing kits have. So I've got the head on a ball joint poly cap so it can go up and down and got a little bit of side to side. It's very very tight since I painted it and then of course it can go 360. The arms can go 360. I've got the shoulders on kind of a Revoltec joint uh, deal. The arms can go out about that far the uh, Luckily, the shoulder armor 
actually, not luckily, had to modify the shoulder armor now that I think about it. Uh, on Sandrock, if you watched that review, the shoulder armor just kind of sat onto the shoulder joint peg and it wasn't really all that secure. And the way they showed you in the manual to do heavy arms shoulder armor, if I can get this out of here, was to uh, basically have a pin or a metal rod or something coming out of the upper arm and just plug that into the uh, inside of the shoulder armor. Well, I basically just took a piece of plow plate and made a little piece right there, drilled a hole in it, and I'll just fit my little Revoltec joint through that hole. And that's not only going to be a little bit more stable, but that's going to give him better uh, articulation in his shoulder joint because the way it was set up previously is his arm pretty much couldn't come out at all because the shoulder armor was actually attached to the upper arm. Now that I've got them as two separate parts, he can actually move his arm out. So I think that was definitely an improvement. And with the Revoltec joint there, he's got a little bit of rotation uh, at the shoulder joint. Again, like on Sandrock, I took out the upper uh, joint for the elbow, so he's just got a single elbow, elbow joint that bends a little bit less than 90 degrees on that one. It bends a little bit more than 90 degrees on the right arm, so I think I was a little bit inconsistent there, but oh well. And again, the wrists are on a polycap ball joint, so they can pretty much rotate and wiggle anywhere they need to. The waist I've got on a metal rod, so it can't go 360 because the backpack gets in the way. It side skirts and it's just not going to do it, but he can rotate about that far to each side. The side skirts I've actually got on a polycap, very similar to what you would see on a high-grade Gundam wing kit or Gundam X or G Gundam or something like that. They don't go up very far. As you can see, they come up pretty high on the sides right there, so they're not going to go up very far but they can rotate back and forth a little bit. I used uh, some Kotobukiya T-joints for the front skirt, so they can go up about that far and then rotate back and forth a little bit. The hips I've got on a polycap ball joint. Legs can go forward and back and out to the side. Pretty much they're restricted by the uh, side skirts rather than the actual movement of the ball joint. The knees, I made a single jointed knee uh, rather than double like I did on Sandrock, simply because the way this uh, upper leg is constructed on the inside just wasn't going to work well for a double jointed knee. So I had to go with a single joint, and it still bends about 90 degrees. The ankles, I've also got on a polycap ball joint, so they can go forward quite a bit, and back, and side to side, and I think they, no, they can't rotate 360 because of this part in the back here, but they rotate enough that you can get uh, some good posability out of them. And the ankle armor are on pins so they can go up and down like so. And I think that's just about it for the main body articulation. Now let's go over the articulation of these old missile hatches. Basically for all the missile hatches, actually no that's a lie, for the missile hatches on the shoulders and chest I used Kotobukiya T-joints. For the ones on the uh, legs, I actually didn't use a joint at all, but I'll show you that in a second. So, using the T-joints, the missile hatches on the shoulders can open up like so. Very nice. Got three little missiles inside of each shoulder. And we can just open this up. If I can get it open. There we go. Open up the one on this side, and there we go. Missile hatches on the chest. As you can see, I added one of those little clear green jewels right there. I think it looks pretty nice. So, uh, these missile hatches on the legs. Let's move down here. Now, originally, I was going to add a, just a tiny joint. I didn't even have any aftermarket joints that were that small. I was basically just going to have to scratch build my own little joint to put on there. And it was just so small and fragile that it just wasn't going to work. So rather than making it an actual joint, I basically just had two pegs in there. And i got to get an X-Acto knife to even pry that open. And I've got two small holes on the side of the leg armor, as you can see there. And basically, it's just like a little plug-and-play thingy here. 
where I can display it either open or closed, but it's not an actual hinge. And as long as I can display it open or closed, I'm happy with it, so I think it worked out pretty nicely. And one last point of articulation on Heavy Arm's body is the combat knife, located on the back of his right arm. It's basically connected with a T-joint, just like the skirt armor and missile hatches. And it can swing forward like so. And Heavy Arms will be able to use it to cut up close combat enemies. Now, as far as the Gatling gun goes, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, since I left off the little handle here, there are no moving parts. And basically, you just take the hand off pop it out of there and deep down inside there it's got a ball joint just like on the wrist and it'll insert into that same poly cap and there you go and of course the weight test the short the not shoulder the elbow joint doesn't really want to support it all that much but the shoulder joint doesn't have any trouble at all so as you can see the elbow isn't really going to hold it but the shoulder joint should hold it up just fine. And he's obviously a little bit front heavy, but he doesn't have any problems uh, holding it forward. And with his Gatling gun and combat knife and all his missile hatches open up, Heavy Arms actually comes off as being pretty intimidating. Now, like my B-Club Sandrock, I made some modifications to convert Heavy Arms Kai to his normal version, simply because these kits are so rare that uh, I honestly don't know if I'll ever come across a uh, 1 to 100 scale B-Club normal Heavy Arms. So, knowing that, I modified the parts to make him normal myself. Now, this is the Kai version, uh, and the differences are the thrusters on the front side and back skirts and the backpack has extra thrusters and you've got a double barrel beam Gatling gun. So all that stuff had to be changed. Now most of these changes I made through resin casting because pretty much all the stuff I had to make resin copies of the parts and then modify them so I could uh, switch them out for the new ones. For the backpack I made a resin recast of it and basically just removed these two thrusters right here and then the two thrusters on the top and added a little bit of detail, scribed on a little triangle and now I've got a normal heavy arms backpack and it's just connected with two metal pins let me plug that in there and we're done for the skirt armor we're basically just going to take it all off and then replace it with the new ones, oops there it goes Take that off, and just like the backpack, I basically made resin recasts of the skirt armor and then just filled in that little thruster right there, so now you've got a normal skirt armor part for heavy arms. Let's see, where's the little T-joint? Plug that in there, and just replace that, and now we've got our normal front skirts. It's the same deal with the side skirts, basically, they're on poly caps, we're just going to pull that out, and then put in the new side skirt, sands, thrusters on the bottom, and there you go. Now the back skirt's a little bit tricky because the back skirt is actually holding the side skirts in place, so we'll take that off, as you can see the poly caps of the side skirts come off with it. And we're basically just going to plug this other side skirt in. As you can see, no thrusters on the bottom. Now the last thing we got to change to make a normal heavy arms is changing the double Gatling gun into a single Gatling gun. Now I thought about just recasting everything and just making a completely separate one, but figured out a way I could do that without having to recast anything. Basically the whole thing is put together with metal pins, as you can see the holes in the back of the shield there. Take this off, put it to the side, separate the two barrels, we don't need this one anymore, and then 
this barrel will connect in the center like so and this is the original piece that goes over the arm and I took some ply plate and scratch built a completely new one for the single barrel Gatling gun and that is going to go right over the top like so it's got two metal pins in it as well and we'll just plug in and there we go we now have a single barrel Gatling gun for heavy arms and this is the barrel that's got the uh, little ball joint on the inside so when we want to connect it to heavy arms arm take the hand off again slide that in there and there we go we now have a complete heavy arms normal version and with the normal version only having a single barrel on the Gatling gun, the elbow joint is able to hold it up a little bit better than it was for the double barrel version. And there isn't really a built-in feature on this kit where you can mount the Gatling gun to the backpack like it was a couple times in the show. Uh, pretty much the only way you're going to be able to do that is to drill some holes and put in some metal pins and connect it like that because on its own it doesn't really have that feature. Well that about does it for my review of the 1 to 100 scale B Club Gundam Heavy Arms Kai and I like this kit for pretty much the same reasons I like Sandrock. Uh, I love Gundam Wing and I love B Club so that's a, a perfect combination for me plus uh, the fact that this kit is so rare is another thing I like about it and the fact that Heavy Arms never got a 1 to 100 scale high grade back when Gundam Wing was airing makes this kit especially desirable for uh, Gundam Wing fans like myself. It's got lots of nice detail. Uh, they put a few more panel lines on this kit than they did on the Sandrock one. I think this kit matches up more with the uh, 1 to 100 scale high grades from Gundam Wing. As you can see, he's got more panel lines on places like the shoulders and on the inside of the leg and places like that. So. I think uh, the sculptor that did Heavy Arms was basing him more closely on those Gundam Wing high grades from back in the 90s. But overall, I do really like this kit. Uh, the Kai version of it is very, very nice. All the extra thrusters and details are really good. The sculpture of the parts is really well. The casting quality is also very clean. So uh, when you originally get this kit, it's going to require very, very little cleanup and uh, that is unless you decide to put in all the work that I did which ended up making me have to clean up a lot more than I should have if I just done fixed pose. So that's probably the only one downside to this kit that I can think of is that it's a fixed pose kit and if you're fine with fixed pose kits then that's not really a downside but if you prefer articulation you are going to have to go in and add the joints yourself like I did. And uh, another thing I guess could kind of halfway be called a downside is the fact that uh, there's a normal type and a Kai type out there. So if you're wanting one or the other, it's going to be kind of hard to find both. Uh, like I showed you earlier, I just found one. So if I wanted both, I had to scratch build the parts myself. And that's pretty much the only way I'm going to be able to do it because I'm not holding out much hope of finding a normal heavy arms anytime soon. So that about does it for this review, and with that, I'll see you guys next time.